everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. So a lot of you have been asking about hydroponics and since it's winter time I figured this would be a great time to talk about this. So as you know I have started my very large scale hydroponics. That's gone off without a hitch. I'm very pleased with it. However a lot of you have been um, discussing on the Facebook page and in email with me that you'd like to see a more cost effective form of hydroponics. So um, you know, uh, it's one of those things that it, it is very difficult to to have a, a indoor garden and still have it be cost effective. There's very few things um, that make it cost effective because the lights themselves are very expensive and it's one of those more long-term investments that people, I guess, think that they're going to immediately see a return on their investment. And it's just one of those things that you have to um, get out of that mindset quickly because unless you have a very strong south-facing window or a sunroom that gets you know 12 hours of sun even in the winter time it's just not going to happen without artificial lighting so i basically uh, set out to make a very cost effective hydroponics method regardless of the lights so i'm kind of letting you do that on your own um there's lots of things you can choose from from leds to compact fluorescence to halogen or uh, halloid metal halloid um you know so there are lots of options for you, you can even do a pick a sunny window um but Today I'm just focusing on a cost effective hydroponics setup, not cost effective indoor gardening. So I just wanted to make that, that, um, that note clear. Uh, but in regards to the cost effectiveness of this hydroponic setup that I'm going to show you, it's $5. So for $5, you can have yourself food growing indoors. And that's such a great thing to have because there's nothing better than fresh homegrown vegetables that are literally right outside your door or right in your basement or wherever you have your setup. You know, it's just a very great feeling and it's something that I would encourage everyone to try. And in fact, also with this setup here, you can find a return on your investment for your hydroponic setup, which is something that is really, really rare. Um, oftentimes, you know, we try to grow things that are just not possible. And what I would really stress to you is for this setup, what I would recommend planting are things that are high return. That is what I really focus on. You know, in my big systems over there, high return stuff, kale, lettuce, spinach, stuff um, that is very expensive in the store. Um, it usually is sprayed very heavily with pesticides and herbicides and fungicides, those types of things and it's typically shipped a very long distance. So they're not typically local things either. So that's what's really great about that is that it has a high return rate. And since the price is so high in the store, you know, this system will hold four plants that I'm gonna show you. And four kale plants can produce, you know, two pounds of lettuce or two pounds of kale a month. And if kale is, you know, $3.99 in the store, you're looking, or $3.99 a pound in the store, you're looking at, uh, eight dollars and this only costs five so within one month it's already paid for itself that's something that I really like to see so I will um, I'll get into showing you this now it is the bucket hydroponic setup it's very simple very self-explanatory what you're going to need is just a bubbler um, I got this from a big box store uh, I got it from Meyer um, in their uh, their fish section it is basically the lowest um, I guess the, the lowest PSI bubbler that they have. It's a very small model. Um, it's made by Fusion. It was $3, three bucks. So uh, this was $3. It came with air tubing. If, if you don't have that, you're going to want that, air tubing. The next thing I got here for a buck 50, air stones. You're going to want some air stones because you have to have aeration. Um, in this type of setup, it's really recommended because um, there's deep water here and you want um, to offer oxygen to all the roots and that way you're going to have good root formations in this small space here. Um, so I do go with aeration on this method. So you got the, the aerators for buck fifty. You got the $3 air pump. And then honestly, the last thing um, you got, the last thing that costs you anything is uh, net cups here. You can make these for free actually by uh, taking just a solo cup or uh, basically a plastic cup of your choice, cutting slits in it, and it's the same thing as a net cup. So 
you know, really does not matter at all your choice of, of net cups, but you're going to need four of those. And then also you're going to need some rock wool. These are so cheap. They're like, well, I buy a big block of them, but by the time you look at the cost per block, it's like five cents per block. So really not expensive at all. You're looking at like 20 cents for these four blocks of rock wool. Um, got some seeds started in there. And now all we're gonna do is get started. So step one, you're going to want to have a bucket with a lid. This was free, I got it from our local bakery. I would always recommend that. It's a food grade bucket because it was in a bakery. So um, it has passed all of the, uh, the food grade standards. Um, also, uh, you can get them from like pickle factories. They usually store like pickles in there, sometimes like bread or whatever, you know. You can usually find some food grade buckets pretty much anywhere. Bakery is a great place to start though. So come on in close and let's get started with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to now drill the holes in the bucket. What we're using here is a two inch circle bit. You're going to want to pick this up. You can pretty much get it at any hardware store. It is just, um, it's just a, basically a bit uh, that has a ring with teeth and that will cut out a hole. Um, and we want the two inch size since we're using a two inch net cup. Um, that basically means that when we set the two inch net cup into the hole, it's not gonna fall all the way through. And it's a very handy tool you're going to wanna get. So now all we're going to do is drill the four holes kind of equal distance apart. All right, there we go. So we have our four holes drilled here. This is going to uh, basically need to be cleaned up, so I will do that now. You don't want any plastic shards or whatever because um, you don't want that in the water and, and it's just probably not best. So um, I'm gonna get this cleaned up and then I'll get back with you in a second. All right, we're back. So what we're going to want to do now is just drill a hole that we can feed our, uh, our air tubing through because uh, you want to feed the tubing out of the bucket here. So I'm just going to use, um, let's see here, let's see what'll do the job. I might be able to use the same tool I just used. All right, cool, I'm gonna use this bit again. I'm just gonna, just for time's sake, I'm just going to drill the hole um, that I'm going to, that I'm going to have, there we go, the, the tubing run through. I just didn't let the, the <laughs> cutting ring go all the way through there. So that's going to fit. Perfect, actually. That's actually an absolutely perfect size. Um, all right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure there's no more plastic chunks there. All right, so I'm going to now prepare to feed the air tubing through. What we're going to do is we're going to just feed the air tube up through this hole that we just made. We have the air stone on the end. Here we go, see, you got the air stone on the end here. You want this down, you want this to be in the bottom of the bucket there. So just make sure that you have enough room to, uh, to have this at the very bottom. There we go, so got the air tubing down there in the bottom. And I'm just going to feed the excess up through the, uh, there, through the hole. So that's that, we can, Put the lid on, and then what we'll do is we'll just fill this with water here. Um, when we fill this with water, uh, then we'll mix in our, our grow solution. Then all we're going to do is simply, uh, well, we gotta hook up the, the tubing to the pump here. Simply done by just connecting the little pump, the single pump valve to the, uh, to the uh, air line there. And that's all you have to do. Then that's ready to be plugged in. So that's done. And then all we're going to do next is just prep our rock wool. Um, you really don't need any of those hydrotin uh, balls. You can add those if you want. This is perfectly fine here. Um, you can see those there. Focus on that and there we go. Focus on, <laughs> there you go. So you really don't need the hydrotin. This is going to work just fine. We're gonna pop those right in there. Take another one here and pop this one right in there. And do that for the other two. There we go, there's that one. And this one. 
there you go. So now you are completely set. We're just gonna fill this up with some, uh, some grow solution of your choice. Um, you can do anything you want. There's really a limitless amount of hydroponic solutions. That's why I'm not going to actually cover that in this episode. I'll save that for another episode where I choose to use, but basically just fill it up with your hydroponic solution of choice and it will work just fine. Now you do wanna make sure that uh, if you are growing like say tomatoes in here, um, I wouldn't recommend it because it's not what I would consider a high output vegetable. But if you wanna grow it just for, you know, just for kicks and you just wanna do it just to see if you can do it, I totally understand. You can drill one hole right in the center. Don't do four plants obviously. You wanna do just one hole right in the center. It'll be a single plant grow system. You can also do the same thing with a pepper. So really versatile awesome setup here super cheap super simple and i mean come on if it was not for me explaining how to do it this would have taken me maybe three minutes to set up if that so you can whip out a bunch of these and um pretty much with free stuff so uh you know very very easy to do now another thing that i thought i would um, bring to your attention is if you want to set up multiple buckets let's say you want to set up three or four of these in a row what you do is called a three-way connector and what you would do is you'd have your main air line coming out of your air pump here. You'd have your main line coming out and about a foot down, you'd put your three-way connector. That allows you to run three separate air lines from one pump. So you can actually have an air line going to one bucket, another air line going to a third bucket and, you know, endless amounts. Again, you can split them off. Um, now the air pressure does drop, so you want to make sure that your pump is rated for a certain amount of um, basically separations. This one, you can do three separations. So I could run a triple valve. I could run three setups off the one pump there. So extremely efficient. So definitely recommend giving this a check out. Definitely recommend trying it. And let me know what you think in the comments box below. I'm very happy with how this turned out. So there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you were inspired to start a hydroponic garden indoors. Uh, like I said, it does not matter if you have a south facing window, a sunroom, some compact fluorescent lights like I have, or some LEDs. I recommend you try it. At least give it a try. It's something that is really fun. It tests your creativity and it gets you outside of your boundaries, especially if you're a northern grower and you can't grow 365 days a year, this will totally allow you to do so. It's very fun. I've been, I've been surprised at how much fun I've had. Um, you know, being an organic grower, this isn't the most organic method. Um, but then again, when you realize that not everything uh, can be exactly how you want it in life, I got over that hurdle pretty quick and I'm having quite a bit of fun. Um, you know, so it's definitely worth a try. And it's definitely, uh, it's definitely just, it's a learning experience. If that at all, if you're a gardener, this is the next level stuff. So pretty cool. I hope this stuff grows pretty well. I'll bring you guys along uh, for as long as I can keep this here. I got another big setup coming in right where this stuff is. So um, I might have to find another spot for it, but I'll keep it going just for you all. So stay tuned for the updates. I'll catch you guys later. This is Luke from My Gardener. Hoping you guys are growing big or going home. Have a very Merry Christmas. I'll talk to you all later. See ya. Bye.